Welcome to Tech Primers. In this particular video, we are going to see what is Groovy and what is Kotlin. And we are going to do miss, miss and match between Groovy and Kotlin. And we are going to see which is better or uh, are, are they both equal or how, how do they compare or fare well with Java. Right. So if you had seen my previous video, I have covered what is Kotlin, but I will uh, just go through again in this video a little bit brief. So before that, let's see what is Groovy. Right. So Groovy came before Kotlin. So Groovy is a language which is written in the JVM. So if you are familiar with Java, right? So Java runs on the JVM, right? So Groovy and Kotlin are different languages which run on the same JVM. However, there are something different. So in case of Groovy, so Groovy is a dynamically typed language. So Java is a statically typed language. However, Groovy is a dynamically typed language. So Basically, you don't have to define any data type um, during the compile time or in the code. So all these uh, uh, casting will be happening at the runtime. So that is the difference between Java and Groovy. So inside Kotlin, so Kotlin is a statically typed language. So the first major difference between Groovy and Kotlin is Kotlin is a statically typed programming language and Groovy is not statically typed programming language. Okay, that is the major difference. So in, in Kotlin, you have to define integer as int, string as string, uh, stuff like that. So in Groovy, you don't have to do that. You can define saying def definition. So uh, that's it. So it can typecast automatically to uh, the different data types. Okay, that is the first major difference. The next one is uh, both these languages are trying to solve the problem of uh, boilerplate codes in Java. So if you take Java, uh, if you create a POJO, right, plain old Java object, so you have to create the getters, you have to create the setters manually and stuff like that, right? So, so literally your POJO is of 100 lines, uh, but internally if you see the, uh, it doesn't make sense, you have to write lots of code to just do getters and setters. So these are like different ceremonies, right? So you have to do them just for the sake of um, making it uh, work in the JVM, right? So in Groovy and Kotlin, you don't have to do that. So in Groovy, you don't have to create getters and setters. By default, if you create a class uh, with the variables, everything is all public. So uh, in Groovy, whatever you create, you have your, uh, you can access a variable inside uh, a particular POJO using the object directly. So let's say you have a class A and the class A has uh, A1, A2, A3 as uh, different variables defined. So if you want to access these variables, you can access as a.a1 or a.a2 directly and same way if you want to do assign any values to the variable you can say a.a1 equal to whatever value so there is no necessity for you to use the getters and setters uh, because groovy creates uh, uses the reflection so um, how groovy works is groovy uses reflection uh, mechanism so whatever code you write in uh, groovy it gets converted into bytecode uh, so if you are using Java, you can you can con you can interact from Groovy to Java, from Java to Groovy and stuff like that. Same with Kotlin, so you can do that. So the major uh, difference between the Java and these languages are um, boilerplate codes. So in Groovy, you don't have to do that. You can directly access your variable. Uh, but in Kotlin, uh, same way in Kotlin, you don't have to write them. But uh, not everything is public. So Kotlin is more of uh, safer than uh, groovy so groovy is like uh, the the groovy works on the principle of reflection but kotlin doesn't work on the principle of reflection so uh, so what happens is when you write something uh, it doesn't get compiled during uh, your compile time so it doesn't resolve all your errors during the compile time so in groovy you will have this problem of uh, uh, failing codes in production or failing codes at runtime similar to javascript right so javascript you don't compile javascript same way in Groovy, uh, it compiles, but it won't be able to resolve your uh, types, data types and stuff like that at runtime, uh, at the compile time. So it all happens at the runtime. But in Kotlin, since it is statically typed, you get all the issues during compile time itself. Um, the other major uh, difference between Groovy and Kotlin is uh, Kotlin is type safe. So null, uh, null safe. So it's like if you have any null object, and in Kotlin, you cannot have any null object in Kotlin. And if you want to have null objects in Kotlin, you have to define specifically saying that this is null. So wherever you are using that variable, you will have to have some special handling to handle that null. So that kind of um, uh, type safe or the null safe uh, values are there in Kotlin. However, in Groovy, there is nothing like that. So Groovy is similar to Java. So 
if you have any null and you will have null pointer issues however in kotlin there is no null pointer issues as such right so apart from that uh, concise both the languages are concise safe that is another thing which i said groovy is not safe uh, because you use reflection so groovy uses reflection to access all your classes and variables and stuff like that but kotlin doesn't use reflection so it is safe interoperable both are interoperable uh, you can use existing libraries uh, jvm java libraries inside groovy and kotlin so you you don't have to worry about compatibility issues with the java code being used inside the groovy script or the kotlin script okay tool friendly uh, ides are there for both uh, even for uh, groovy we have good ides the other major difference between groovy and kotlin is groovy works uh, on the principle of dsls domain specific language right so if you see uh, gradle right uh, the gradle gradle is nothing but a build and build uh, orchestration uh, library or the tool similar to maven so it is written on the concept of groovy dsl so dsls are nothing but domain specific language you can create your own domain specific language uh, so that it is user friendly and it is um, like user readable syntax it is not like your maven uh, where you have to give um, xml tags so it's literally like learning the machine language which maven can understand however uh, gradle is different right so gradle uses this domain specific language which is the groovy dsl so that is a difference uh, that is something which is there in groovy so groovy has the concept of domain specific language however kotlin doesn't have it and the other thing is vibrant and rich ecosystem so you have lots of uh, additional uh, libraries inside groovy so kotlin is a new language fairly new language it is not even two years old so groovy is like it's been there for a while i'm not sure when it was started but um, with groovy you can do lots of things uh, since it is um, uh, using reflection right you have lots of capabilities you can uh, plug uh, you, there is something called meta class in groovy where uh, you can uh, plug a method to any object so it's literally like you call a print method on an object you can override that print method at a super class level so it's like any it's it's like at the object level so in, on any object if you call print it can uh, override you can override that particular print method so that that is something there in groovy so using that there are different uh, features uh, which are implemented like memo eyes and stuff like that there is something called currying so there are these are different concepts inside groovy okay so kotlin uh, doesn't have anything like that kotlin is type safe so it's a new language right? it's evolving right now the only advantage i see with kotlin is you write very minimal code it is safe and you can uh, still leverage um, whatever groovy was doing like the boilerplate code removal and stuff like that the major advantage i see with kotlin is the null null pointer things which kotlin enforces so you cannot have null variables so that is pretty good in kotlin compared to groovy but however groovy is like uh, you can do whatever you want with your code so that that is something which is different between groovy and kotlin so so it, it is up to you to decide which one to use so i would prefer using groovy for writing test cases and kotlin can be used in production uh, i would say it depends on the developers call or depends on the management call on how they want to see kotlin from uh, in using uh, inside their application inside their firm okay so that is what i would say currently everybody started using kotlin for android development and google is now supporting uh, kotlin as a first class language for uh, android so because because of the code which they write because of the less number of lines of code which they write in, in the android applications because it's all based on the same jvm concept right so that is why people are uh, more um, going towards kotlin than groovy or java okay so that is the basic difference between groovy and java uh, groovy and uh, kotlin so you have to decide which one you can use for um, which so for example backend processing if you ask me frankly you can use java itself you don't have to worry about groovy or kotlin so groovy can be used for writing test cases because they are uh, you don't have to worry about uh, writing lots of code in your test cases so in that case you can write you can write groovy script for writing test cases right same way for kotlin uh, if you want to ha have right now uh, all android applications or majority of the android applications are moving towards kotlin because they are uh, because of their uh, safe uh, 
um, safety nets and um, um, concise um, user support so that you don't have to write lots of boilerplate code in the J JVM language okay so that is a major difference between Groovy and Kotlin so let me know what do you think uh, about that so if you have any queries you can drop them in the comment below so if you haven't subscribed to the channel go ahead and subscribe to it if you like the video go ahead and like it uh, do let me know if you want me to do any specific video uh, that's it for this particular video meet you again in the next video thank you